Nice to meet you all. I'm very glad to see you all. And thank you for attending this course. It's really an honor and a privilege. And also thank you, Eric, for getting me in. Let's get started. So good evening, everyone. I'm really happy to meet you. Uh, my name is Roman, as you already know. I worked in several projects that I'm going to tell you now about. This is Bertone B99. I was involved at the initial stage when I was uh, a student here in Italy, in Turin. And it got printed on Autocar magazine, this proposal, even though it didn't get selected, but anyway. And first production project which came out uh, with my participation was uh, Fiat Tipo hatchback, where I did a facelift for the interior. The rest of it was a carryover, but major part of style was including the upper IP part, excluding radio. Radio was back then introduced as the new, new component for the line of uh, Fiat. And uh, they wanted to create the new surrounding for that radio in order to show that it's kind of popping up. Back then in 2014, 2015, it was a, new, it was a trend back then. The next thing that came out was, was this Chinese little microcar called Baojun E300, where I got involved in work on several details. And the flagship of the, of the brand called Wuling, which is a big MPV. So this is briefly my experience. I worked in Italy and China for the last 10 years. Here I would like to explain, um, let's say, the difference between exterior and interior car design. When we buy, when we buy a car or when we look at the concept car, first of all, we look at the exterior and we judge whether we like it or not. That's why I decided to choose this picture of uh, Venus, which is the goddess, Greek god, ancient Greek goddess of the beauty. So we start to think about the car, whether the car is beautiful or not, when we look at it from outside. But in reality, we get the final impression from the final product when we are sitting inside the car. So it's important that the object is not only beautiful, but also utilizable and uh, comfortable. So that's why I decided to pick up this uh, chaise longue uh, by French designer Le Corbusier. Basically, like every product, uh, every result that we see in the, on the market and on as a concept car is just the tip of an iceberg. So behind every interior design process, there is a long and uh, long and intensive process of hard work. Basically, we as designers, we are usually given the package where on which we have to set the H point, like Oscar position. Then we have to generate a bunch of styling 2D proposals. And then we have to convert it in 3D proposal, the interior. And then after that, we, when we encounter the engineers, they tell us, no, it should be like this or like that. So let's say when you send to them beautiful file with nice surfaces, they usually send to you something that obviously doesn't look that nice, but something that works right. And what happens after that is that uh, his designer comes to engineer and there happens big discussion. One of the biggest challenges for me is for interior designer when I was 20, 25, uh, was that I had to work on the seat and then I had to place inside the seat the airbag from another car. And uh, the thing is that the airbag was supposed to be put inside the backrest. So uh, I had to conduct the meeting against uh, 20 or 30 engineers to figure out how this would be possible to make it or not. Anyway, then they impose on you some modifications and then after that, the uh, designer uh, creates the new design proposal. And this process basically has to get repeated um, as many times as it necessary, as long as it takes in order to get the product uh, done. So let's say, so it seems like it's a complex job, right? It is. But at the same time, let's look at the brighter side. 
why should the one consider the job in interiors? I personally feel that this position, this uh, kind of job is a bit uh, discriminated in respect to exterior design because, let's say, if you look at, if you open Instagram or any other social media and type car design, hashtag, major part of works is only about exteriors. So everybody thinks like, yeah, exterior is the car design. But in reality, no, interior has a lot of stuff that is involved into car design. First of all, one of the reasons is importance of exterior is expanding right now. Think about uh, autonomous driving, where there is more and more inside-out design approach, which is being uh, which is being induced by new opportunities of electric vehicle platforms, because we get more and more space liberated thanks to the new packaging. And also, autonomous driving would allow us to get rid of uh, let's say, necessities of safety. Hypothetically, it could get us rid of such things as airbags, which are quite chunky as the piece of interior. Well, certainly, there is some, there is certain level of advantage to get a job, because interior design is a complex job. Within certain amount of space, uh, US designer must put a lot of things. Let's say under IP, you have steering wheel, you have the cluster of the instrument, you have the air vents, you have also a radio, even today, sometimes you have a radio. Or else, instead of the radio, you might get a special kind of uh, cell phone holder or tablet holder, and it requires the space as well. And also, you have a glove box, obviously. So, at the same time, within this kind of work, there are many types of jobs that are involved. Where everything starts with concept design, right? Fantasy into something that could be produced, and it's quite a lot of work to do. So it's feasibility design. Then after that, once all the data is done, well, all, well, all the data is uh, frozen, then it comes time for color and trim proposals. Color and trim designers have to figure out, okay, here we have this kind of sculpture. What materials are better to use? and which area is better to get accentuated and which area must be more hidden and what kind of concept can we apply on top of it. And also, of course, it's since interior consists of many components, it's also a component design where you have to create uh, the stuff that could be not only beautiful but also usable. The seats, knobs, uh, buttons, air vents, cup holders, ambient lighting, uh, basically everything around the human being. After the design process is usually done, it uh, has to surpass also design quality division. There is a special division of people who analyze the CAD, uh, final CAD data or pre-final CAD data, where they point out some errors and mistakes within design quality, which is usually plenty within interiors, because interior design is super complex due to amount of the components, so that there are many kind of angles and uh, joint area, uh, join, sorry, my English is cars today, and uh, joining areas. For example, the door panel together with the instrument panel. That area is usually not an easy place to solve. It, it takes quite a time. On top of that, there are more technical jobs, such as interior design engineer, ergonomy specialist, feasibility design, so etc., and so on and so forth. So, I was talking about the jobs. Basically, there are many jobs related to interior design. So, it's more job opportunities, summarizing everything. Let's move on. Lately, there has been more focus put on user experience, and uh, uh, UI UX design. So it's more attention focused to the interior because nowadays also they start to pay attention more to the interaction on how does the person interact with the vehicle. It's not only the watching the, the information on the, on, the, on the speed, but also the the interactions started to happen at more sophisticated level. For example, there is an interesting feature within Mercedes-Benz S-Class, the smart ambient, ambient light. Imagine yourself 
uh, driving, uh, let's say riding a car, you're in the passenger seat in Mercedes-Benz S-Class, and uh, it's dark inside the saloon, but then you know that you have a newspaper on, the, on your rear seat. So you move your hand towards where you think there is a newspaper, and ambient light turns on automatically. This is the example of UI UX, uh, smart UI UX design from Mercedes-Benz's class. But let's say, first of all, in order to start doing interior, you need to know some uh, interior fundamentals of ergonomics. We're not going to get deep into that. We're just going to touch the water with our feet. And then after that, I'm, we're going to train about expression of interior sketch and rendering. This is where we will go a bit deeper. So, as all of you know, there, is, uh, there are many, many body types of cars, like micro cars, economy cars, and so on and so forth. And fundamentally, the difference fundamental difference between their interiors is the position of H point. Within micro cars, the position of H point is slightly higher in comparison to, let's say, luxury, uh, special, here it's called specialty cars, but I would say sports cars or supercars. Supercars has the lowest uh, H point distance from the floor, from the ground. And let's say, totally different story about SUVs and uh, commercial vehicles. So, uh, there are thousands, if not, yeah, if not uh, more variations of the uh, package due to the diversity of automotive car brands, because every brand uh, has its own history. Some of brands are more linked to the history, some of them are less. Some of them experience more with proportions, some of them stick to the same solution of the package for decades. And uh, that's the reason why there is also a big range of uh, packages. Yeah, as the consequence is that there is a very big uh, amount of variations of positions of the Oscar within. So this is one of the examples of uh, placing of the Oscar uh, in, the, in the car interior. Let's say this is the typical, kind of stereotypical packaging for hatchback. Uh, you need to pay attention to two things. Let's say, first of all, we need to pay attention to the fact that the passenger must be located at least at the distance 355 uh, 365 uh, millimeters from the central axis. And the distance is usually measured by H-point. H-point is the central uh, sectionary point, which is located uh, somewhere here, at the area where your leg is supposed to be uh, rotating, joint area. I will share this document for you, uh, with you later, so that you could uh, take a look if you are interested. But we're not going to go really, really deep into technical stuff. You can check it out later. Well, surely you need to pay attention to a couple of things. Is the leg distance and also uh, the, the driver's feet is usually always inclined, inclinated like this because of the presence of the pedals. And also, the headroom must be around uh, 80 to 100 millimeters on top of the driver. In case of the passenger, it, uh, it's, not, um, it's not the same rule applied, because usually it's supposed to be two adults at the front and children at the back. So let's say it's okay for adult person to almost touch the roof in this area at least in Europe. I don't know about USA. Perhaps American cars have different regulation. Okay, another point is that, yeah, like what we, like I said before, the measured from H point. Yeah, let's say this kind of distance is measured not vertically from the head 
to the top, to the first point. But it's measured by a specific uh, eight degree line, which is coming from H point up to the head. And then from here up to here, eight degree line, this distance must be around, here it says plus 102 millimeters, but uh, I met different criteria in my experience. It was like 80 millimeters, 80 to 100 millimeters. So the distance across the trim, as you can see, the shoulder room uh, should be around uh, 256 millimeters above uh, the edge points. So it's basically this much. Okay, here there is uh, something quite, we're getting a little bit more technical here. Anyway, we have to pay attention also to the position of the steering wheel, but basically you can remember it by this yellow line and uh, yellow circles. Can you see guys well this uh, slide? Yes, yep, yep. yes we can. Yep. Perfect, okay. I just need to check connection sometimes, it runs away <laughs> from here. Anyway, um, you can remember it very easily. Basically, slightly above uh, the knee area, the center of steering wheel. So, and also at the same area, the gear shifter must be located. Let's say the middle of the range of the movement between the gear shifter. Yeah. And uh, what, what the, is the lowest circle? Sorry? The lowest this circle. One? No, no, no. The yellow one. Yellow one? Yeah. Well, this is, I guess this is the axis for the, for the shifter, for the inclinations of the shifter. Because shifter has a certain range of movement, so here there are several joints, several points. One of them is the uh, center of the steering wheel. Yeah. The second is the, is the point of the knee, I guess. Yeah. And then here, underneath, there is this um, shifter movement, shifter okay. axis. Yeah. And also, one thing that here is shown is the kind of cover on top of the screen, which must be within the limits of the visibility, cluster visibility. Uh, but at the same time, lately, this kind of thing gets disrupted by uh, the fact, by the presence of this kind of, sorry, screen interiors, such as latest Cadillac SUV. And also you have seen more interiors coming from Xiaopan, from uh, uh, te Tesla, from, mm, from, what's the name of it, Lucid, and many more. And another thing that got disrupted lately is the fact that it's no longer that the cluster must be in the area of cluster visibility inside the steering wheel, because uh, six or seven years ago, Peugeot has introduced completely new revolutionary layout, where they decided to move the cluster way more up, and they decided to finally to squeeze the steering wheel underneath. So there are more and more interesting new opportunities coming up these days. And we should, uh, let's say, keep our eyes more open. Okay, here is pretty much obvious, the steering wheel with the cluster, with the, with the cluster underneath. Okay, here we have the scheme for interior which is from the book uh, called H point. But nowadays this kind of scheme gets more and more disrupted. And here on the left, there are a couple of examples to that. For example, the cluster, which is no longer covered by the hoodie, uh, the steering wheel, which kind of gets its shape changed as well, as you can see here. The air vents that are no longer only just four holes, but they can, get either completely seamless horizontal or they could uh, be completely redistributed. For example, Citroen Cactus C4 has only one 
and two cluster, uh, sorry, one and two air vents uh, area. On the right side, the driver does not have any, uh, any air vent anymore. And on top of that, the driver does not have here the airbag neither. Here on top of the IP, there is uh, just uh, storage. So where did they move the airbag? They moved it here to the rooftop. This is the screenshot from YouTube of the crash test of Citroen Cactus. So let's say there is a room for innovation inside interiors, which is happening in front of us. Well, here is just the scheme for and uh, rough dimensions. Uh, in case of, if you guys would like to develop your package a bit more in detail later in the future. Let's say average luggage has the height 560 millimeters and the length 760 millimeters with the thickness around 150 millimeters. But I will give it a bit more. From my personal experience, I think it's around 200. Anyway, another interesting point is that the distance between the steering wheel and, uh, let's say, the cluster instrument must be, at, must be free from anything, at least within the limits of 8, 85 millimeters. Another thing I forgot to mention here is that the distance between the, the ultimate point of your um, gear shifter until whatever comes next must be at least uh, 50 millimeters. Okay, here is roughly the scheme of the hand reach, which, is, uh, which could be different depending on the action. There are different kinds of, uh, there are many different kinds of hand reach actions. One is for push, another one is for picking, the third one is for rotating. The rotating one is the shortest, as you can see. So this is roughly the hand reach here for picking, kind of the middle one, which is this purple area, purple zone. Yeah. And here this blue is... Uh, okay, I got it. Here, I remember now. Here, what is, what is written here blue is the area for the steering wheel. And one of particularities of the steering wheel is that it must be located as far away as possible from the air vents. Otherwise, it will be blocking the flow. And otherwise, it will be also, let's say, pulling too much the hands of the driver. So that's why it's necessary to push the air vents as far away as possible. Now we're going to speak about method of uh, designing interiors. First of all, um, the one needs to understand the customer, his needs and daily routines. Also, it's important to pay attention to geographic location, or like which can what country, what continent it is, uh, what, what is the power of customs there and traditions, and plus the level of economy and buyer's capability in order to understand better their lifestyle let's say car that is uh, cars that sell well in China most probably would not sell would not work well in Italy for example and uh, vice versa here in Italy the one can see a lot of fiat uh, little hedgebacks but in China it's impossible to see them like Italian hedgebacks second thing that the one needs to do is build up the context First of all, we need to identify what is the problem within the interior. It depends on the task that you have. Sometimes it can be based on the complaints from the customers. Sometimes the problem could be just uh, the fact when you, have, uh, when you have to work on the startup company, you have a problem, which is uh, not a problem, but the task, a challenge to bring, to build the new identity from the scratch. Then after that, you can map out your ideas. I will show you later the special instrument for that. Then, of course, you need to also to benchmark your competitors. 
research the lifestyle of the products or product ecosystems such as Apple, Xiaomi, uh, I don't know, Philips, etc. And also keep asking yourself these questions. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? And how am I going to achieve it? Then after that, you define the concept. For, for example, I'm going to work on the hatchback for a uh, small Chinese city, uh, in average, five millions of people. The customer has this kind of income, like uh, 15 or 20, 25,000 RMB per month. And then he has to travel to work, uh, which is located like 10 kilometers away from his home. And he has to work, uh, work a lot, like 996 culture. By the way, guys, who knows about 996 culture in China? Except James. Uh, not familiar with the term. OK, I'll explain. 996 means working from 9 AM until 9 PM six times a week. They work a lot. What? So, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why they're successful. Yeah. And this is, this is like in uh, all areas? Pardon? This is like in, in, all, in all work areas? Like designers? Uh, ah, in China? Yeah, designers. Everybody. Designers work even more, sometimes 15 hours a day. I can say for sure. <laughs> So it's not from nine to nine, but maybe that's, nine, that's nine, enough. Tenths, nine, ten, seven. If they're not working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that's not enough. Sto scherzando, ovviamente. Ho capito, ho capito. Anyway, after that, after you understand it, you have to work out on the package, make small sketches and alias base. Either you can do it either by hands or by alias. It's up to you, whatever instrument you prefer. Then you have to sketch it. And then you have to render it, of course. This is the instrument that I would recommend you to use to. Of course, some of you have already attended the course by Mr. Ed Stops. Um, but uh, I would like to share with you also this instrument to those who have not. Uh, have not participated in that course that will, might be helpful basically this is the map of macro trends within each field of uh, our aspect of life such as technology society energy infrastructure and vehicles and then you you might add on top of it whatever you need uh, whatever could be related to your project but i think starting with this file is already enough you could see how the was the progression in technology in the past, and then extrapolate what is going to happen in the future. And uh, this might give you the context in which uh, of, uh, of the time and space, uh, what kind of product you're going to create. Let's say in looking back 2011, let's say, let's remember the cars from the past. The interiors were quite bulky because there was so much stuff in there. And nowadays, thanks to development of communication technologies such as gadgets, the interiors are becoming slimmer and slimmer. And the radios are practically, they are still there, but slowly they are disappearing. There's the influence from mobile technology. And we need to figure out what's going to be the biggest thing in the, fu in the future like in 10 years ahead, in 20 years ahead. OK, here are some examples of the process of sketching. This is the work uh, on Jaguar B99. Basically, everything starts normally with the generation of the theme. Once you figure out your concept, once you figure out that you're going to make a British car, something elegant, something stylish with uh, precious details, with uh, elegant uh, but yet sophisticated look, then 
you start designing, first of all, the IP instrument panel. Nowadays, probably this approach would require a bit more work because you might consider desiring entire, uh, entire saloon view briefly because we start paying attention more, not just to the shape, but to the whole experience. But yet, the instrument panel usually is the element which commands the style of the whole interior. The, the top of the style is located here, in this area. And then after that, you start going deeper and deeper into details. Slowly, you start also drawing the door panels. Usually, you start first with the IP, then door panels. Maybe both of them together. And only after that, you start adding some ideas related to the seeds and other components. And then at the end, you get this final proposal. There is one thing that I would like to pay your attention to, guys, that uh, I have noticed these days happening a lot. Can anyone tell me what am I talking about? The screens. Yes. Right. The screens. Yes, yes. There is one. There is a certain danger to it. Is that screens make the interiors become, let's say, uh, more and more less, less unique, I would say. So at the end, designers don't have that many tools left, except for color and trim and playing with lines. So be careful with the screens. Maybe we need to find new way on how to uh, project necessary information and need to find a different way for interaction with our car. So that's why I would suggest you to explore following opportunities. First of all, autonomous drive vehicles. And also, how about development of AI? Will we talk to the machines? Or, or maybe we'll have to do something more, like merging with them. Also, we need to consider the possibilities of the new, new possibilities for the architecture, the modularity of the platform, uh, similar work that is that Canoe is doing, or for example, the new opportunities that are coming from the world of autonomous cars. Uh, I would really suggest you to pay attention to the interior of uh, Prisma's good agency. They did a fantastic job of modular interior for recent concept uh, for London Taxi. Industry 4.0, how our cars will be communicating in the future. And not only cars, maybe also other objects. Right now, everything they say, they talk about human-centered design. On the other hand, um, I think this term is, I think another term would be more relevant, which is uh, mobile, mobile data design. Because everything right now is more and more revolving around our cell phones you know, and around other, our technology rather than around uh, human being. Because, for example, with the cell phone nowadays, we can order a taxi, we can make payments, we can book tickets, we can do everything, we can sometimes even access our cars. So, let's see, what's going to happen in the future? Also, another thing about new interfaces. How about finding alternative way of uh, interaction with the car. How about no screens at all? Why would we need screens when, for example, we might have opportunity to use the mixed reality tools? And at the end, what is the next biggest thing after, after let's say, cell phones? With 6G, what kind of opportunities does it carry to us? So guys, here is your homework. You need to map out your ideas. You need to point out the points of the future and reasons behind them. 
you need to set it in the, in the boards of Microtrends and Energy Technology Society location and uh, write um, two, three keywords under each one of them. Basically, it will look like a mood board for energy. What will be happening in the energy or technology society and what location will it be? And then three, uh, three keywords will be enough for each of these mood boards. And then after that, it will, after it will help you to build your own scenario. Yeah, so I would also, I, you know, I, I think for those of you who took Ed's course, I think you can uh, probably... Or place the poster in I'm sorry, I think there's a connection issue. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah I can yes. hear you. Oh, okay. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, if you if you took Ed's course, um, you know, you, you can really build upon what you already did in Ed's course, or if you want to start a new concept, you can do that as well. But um, for those of you who did not take Ed's course, um, you, know, you know, this is this is going to be a very short course. So I encourage you guys to to you know, you know, put something together pretty quickly and something that that can really help you to dig into the, the sketching and uh, and rendering skills that Tim is going to be showing you. So. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah you yes. fell yep. off for a bit there. Yeah, we can hear you now, though. Yep. Uh, sorry, guys. Your connection is something is wrong. Anyway, basically, have you guys hear, heard the part of the homework? Uh, the first, up to the, the middle of part two. All right, R long story short, those of you who have attended the course of Ed Stubbs, you, ju you don't have to do first part. Uh, you can just start straight away sketching your package and the saloon scenario sketches plus IP sketches. Um, yeah, just remember a couple of points about uh, sketching. IP sketches traditionally set the styling language to the interior. And door panels usually follow the instrument panel style. Sometimes they tend to kind of integrate perfectly with IP, so that IP kind of embraces the door panels. Yeah. And C point, obviously, keep in mind the purpose of your vehicle. Anyway, uh, the topics of the project uh, you have received in the PDF, so you can think about which topic of the project would you like to work at. It's either about your personality or about, let's say, Brave New World, the next biggest thing that is coming. You can think about some post-apocalyptic scenario if you want. So basically, there are two themes. First one is kind of Brave New World. Here we have to hypothesize what will be the biggest thing that is coming in the next uh, 10 years, in a period of time from 2020. Uh, until 2030 and uh, you need to think about what will happen in the future that will affect all our aspects of life such as for example pandemic has affected for our lives this time is already second year that is still going on and we're still staying at home right so you don't have any restrictions just uh, try to figure out a good, good solid scenario. Or alternatively, there is a second topic for you, Avatar, which is called Avatar Interior with your personality. Basically, you need to try to understand yourself and try to express yourself, your needs, uh, through automotive interior. Whichever topic you prefer, it's up to you. All right. So, Great. shall we sketch now?